Uh, hi guys, so, yeah, sorry, sorry from the background, you can hear some wind, uh, it's, it's pretty windy out where I live, but, um, I'm gonna play the new campaign trail again, and I don't know if, I was playing around with the optimal RNG mod, I think before I said it was kind of stupid, but I, I don't know, Some sometimes I use it, because there's too many like questions where it's basically lock based questions in some of the mods this one doesn't have that but uh i'm gonna play as uh william jennings bryan so william mckinley runs as the establishment republican while william jennings bryan brings a radically different agenda to the race the bad economy and the coinage of silver uh, dominate discussion McKinley will make the case for traditional Republican policies, including strong defense of the gold standard. Brian will state that there can be no relief for debtors and or the larger economy without inflation, which he hopes to bring about via free silver. See, I'm going to play Brian. So, William Jennings Bryan, he's a Democrat, Democrat from Nebraska. Uh, William Jennings Bryan uh, electrified the convention in Chicago with his famous Cross of Gold speech. Running as a liberal and an evangelical, his primary issue is the inflation of the currency through the free coinage of silver. This gives him fanatical support amongst the farmers of the South and West. Lacking the funds to run a large campaign, Bryan will bring his speaking talents to bear by touring the United States. So, the best uh, VP here is Henry Teller. It, it kind of looks like he isn't, because uh, he's also from the West, and he wouldn't add to the East, but for some reason, uh, he, he helps the best. Um, but I'll, I'll explain the other. The other guys, I think, are all okay, I think. Matthews might not be good, uh, because he's anti, apparently he's anti-union or something, so that might not be good if you pick him, but I think every other one, yeah, I played his boys before, I think he was pretty good, Seawall is okay, uh, that, that was the original choice, um, Brian made in, in real life, 1896, that was the original VP, but, Actually, there were two VP selections in real life that year. I think it was Seawall and the, the Dem... Because Brian was a member of the People's Party as well. He was nominated by the Democrats and the People's Party. And the other guy was a senator from Georgia, I think, or governor from... I, th I, th I think... Uh, I can't remember. His name. Oh, yeah, Watson. Yeah, that was his name. I think Tom Swatson was the People's Party VP selection that year, and Seawall was the Democrat selection. But so it was like a weird coalition ticket that year. The, this mod doesn't really talk about that though, for some reason. But um, or not. This isn't the mod, but like the main thing anyway. So he's a banker from Maine and a shipbuilder. He's also a, he also has a weird religion called uh, Arthur Seawall. It's called Sweden. He's a Swedenborgian. It's like some weird Christian denomination. He's like the only, one of the only politicians to be a Swedenborgian or whatever that is. I don't know. But, but yeah, yeah, that that's something that's sort of a fun fact about him. But as one of the few prominent Democrats in that region, he could help balance the ticket with a non-Western presence. His considerable wealth can also help finance a campaign. Seawall is an uninspiring choice to most Democrats, however, as he considered to be on the conservative wing of the party. And his few political connections, yeah, I wouldn't really pick him either. Like I said, pick uh, Teller. Because apparently he does the best. Uh, Adley Stevenson. He's a Democrat from Illinois. He's the current vice president in the second term of the Cleveland administration. 
unlike most of Cleveland's associates, he's not a bourbon Democrat, which is like a conservative Democrat in those times, like pro-business Democrat, and has come out in favor of Brian. Selecting him could help soften Brian's rupture with that wing of the party. However, Grover Cleveland is immensely unpopular due to the Depression. Yeah, there's an economic depression going on when this election occurs. And Democrats may wish to avoid further association with his administration. So yeah, Stevenson was the VP pick in 1900 when William Jennings Bryan ran again because Bryan ran three times. Um, he ran in 1896, 1900, and 1908. That was the three times he ran. Uh, Brian's brother was also the VP selection in 1924, which is probably the 1924 election is probably one of the worst performing performances by a Democrat because there was mass prosperity under the Republicans in the 1920s. But I'm getting off topic anyway. So Claude Matthews is the current governor of Indiana. He's highly popular in the state, which does help that in that area. But he has combined populist policies with a firm stance on labor actions. He's also matched Brian's conservatism on public morality issues. Uh, Matthews has broken a couple strikes in the past, however, and this could dampen his appeal to the industrial elements of the party. Yeah, actually, he could be... Never mind what I said, because he, he's from Indiana, that's a swing state, sort of, so he'd be good, I guess. I don't know, I think all of these, like, you could win as all of these, I think. There's, I don't think there's, like, a major one, unless I'm mistaken. It's, like, bad, like, in 1988, or something like that. There isn't, like, a major bad ticket or something, like some of the other campaigns. Yeah, Porous Boys was the one I usually picked before. Uh, he swept into the governor's chair in Iowa during the 1890 Democratic route. He is strongly supportive of low tariffs and free silver, and has a lot of influence on some of the potentially important states. He is also more moderate on the prohibition issue. Boys will reinforce the Democrats' pivot to liberalism, which could be a plus or minus depending on the area. Uh, Henry Teller... Henry Teller is a Western Republican who was forced to leave his party's convention after the resolution on the silver issue. He could be an unorthodox option if the Democrats are looking to establish a moderate image on the issues outside of free silver. However, Teller adds little in competing with, for electoral votes. Western states are fanatically pro-silver and sparsely populated. So yeah, even though he doesn't look, he looks kind of like a bad option, he actually is the best for this, apparently. So yeah, when you start, you're sort of the underdog when you start at the beginning. Well, no, it's actually, it's kind of close, actually. So, what you want to do is moderate. So, you say you're 100%, uh, because the, one of the reason the reason sorry about that uh, the main reason why Brian lost in our world well I mean in real life is because first of all he was a Democrat and the Democrats were sort of blamed for the administration even though Brian hated um, Grover Cleveland the outgoing president there was still the, the Democrats still weren't popular because of the uh economic depression and also Brian was seen as like a radical like they call him like a socialist and stuff like that and uh, they gave McKinley like a bunch of money like I think the highest amount any presidential candidate like a like a billion dollars or something crazy like that they gave uh, McKinley because they were afraid Brian was like a communist or something like that but it, he wasn't, he just had, like, inflationary, he, he had weird political views anyway, but, yeah, so, 
you know, he, he, Brian supported inflationary economics. He was a strong supporter of inflationary. Um, you want to sort of moderate here too. That, that's sort of how you win this. You got to moderate, make yourself not look like a radical. I, I might lose. Sorry about that. Again. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really nasally still, like, it's being, like, I, I know I said that last video, but, like, yeah, it, like, legit won't go away, it's really stupid anyway, but, yeah, um, yeah, you just want to moderate as much as possible, so, um, yeah, so just no, no drinking on Sundays. Yeah, you want to go to New York. I might lose. Like, I, I think I just said this, but I might lose because I don't have optimal RNG on. So I might lose New York in this, but I, I think I'll still win the election here. I hope so anyway. But Usually I used to do one big speech, but apparently you, you got to do... Because I thought New York was... You couldn't win it, but apparently you can win it, so... Um, uh, which one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say the Democratic idea. Um, yeah, I think the third one is too socialistic, I think. But the second one's the best one. Uh, how are we doing? Okay, we're doing pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, say I alienated uh, prominent Republicans. Now, the advisor's response looks bad here, but it's, it's what we want to say. Like I say, you have to reach out to moderates because Brian was seen as a radical, so you want to... That's how you win this. Uh, yeah, I almost just got messed up there because it's it's a different wording. Yeah, you don't want to say tariffs because Democrats were mostly anti-tariff, so you want to say they should be low. Yeah, I, I almost just messed up there, because the wording was kind of weird. Uh, you want this one. You say, it frequently adjusted, sort of moderate, sort of. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be too conservative either. You don't want to be too, like, bourbon-ish, bourbon democrat. You don't, you don't want to be that either, but you don't want to be like a socialist. You gotta find the middle, middle. That's like pretty much every campaign in this game anyway. You don't want to be like a radical. Uh, yeah, Cleveland, actually a very little known fact. Cleveland at this point wasn't even really a Democrat. He was like a national. There was a third party called the National Democrats or the Gold Democrats. And they were supporters of the gold standard. And they nominated like two 70-year-old men as foot president and vice president. I can't remember their names. I, th I think they pop up later though. But uh, yeah, Cleveland was actually a national Democrat. Democrat. He didn't support Brian at all. In fact, he probably uh, preferred McKinley over Brian. Because, yeah, I mean, they, they didn't, they did not like each other at all, Brian and, and uh, Cleveland. But yeah, basically, mo on the president's list, Cleveland is listed as a Democrat, but really it should be in his second term. Democrat than National Democrat. That's how I do it. Cause he he wasn't like a, he wasn't with the main Democrat party. He was with the Gold Democrats. Cleveland was. Uh, 
yeah, you want you want to focus on the Midwest. That's where you went to. Uh, yeah, yeah, you want yeah, just focus on the Midwest. You already got California locked down. Um, yeah, don't be a firebrand either. Um. Yeah, Brian was anti-Darwin, so. You want Hearst to support you so you don't become isolationist here. Even though Brian, Brian was a pacifist and an isolate. Um, here you don't want to be. Yeah, I probably won't win New York here. I don't think I will. Yeah, because by like earlier, I think by now it was already like Democrat. But, uh, yeah, you appear with him. Want women to vote? I think we we got the swing states anyway. Yeah, like we're good. I'm pretty sure. We're not we're not the best you can do, but it's not the best you can do, but we're still gonna win, probably. Uh yeah, here you want you don't wanna outright like ban child labor. But well you do wanna ban or oh it's getting closer now. It's getting a lot closer. I might I could win. I don't New York, I don't know. Uh, don't make any deal with him. Palmer was the... Palmer was the gold national democrat. That's the party Cleveland uh, went to after Brian got nominated. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, don't do anything with them. Uh... Some limited amount, don't. Fuck, what's going on here? Oh, we're still gonna win, apparently, but for some reason Ohio's going, I don't know why. Yeah, oppose Cleveland. Oh yeah, cause you gotta get the patronage, yeah. Yeah, there we go. See, yeah, the patronage is the uh, issue here. Um, yeah, yeah, we still might. I don't know. It's it's getting pretty close. I don't know. See, if I had optimal RNG, we'd have this like down in the bag, but I I forgot to put it on. Um. These are the right answers, though. If you want to win, like, a max majority, these are the right... What I'm picking are the right answers. Apparently, anyway. Um, yeah, state responsibility. Uh, yeah, moderate. Moderate. And you want to go in the Midwest. And let's see how we do. I hope we win this. I don't know. I don't think we've lost one on the channel yet. I don't think we've lost a campaign because I I like to play. I don't. I know. I like to be safe with it before I actually do a campaign because I don't want to look like an idiot. Yeah, so yeah, South obvious. The South would go to us. Those states that McKinley's winning will always go to him. In New England. Yeah, make Pennsylvania too. That's the same with Optimal. And Jersey. Okay, we won Ohio. That's, that's good. Yes, there you go. 
And yeah, so we won. Uh, the great commoner will soon be president of the United States. He'll be with your views as ever sniffed the presidency, let alone won it. And with that in mind, your supporters are riding friends, friends, frenziedly in the streets. The sweetest speech of all will be your victory speech tomorrow in Lincoln, Nebraska. Prepare to enact your reform agenda and most importantly, the free coinage of silver. So yeah, actually, yeah, we did win New York. Very, it's pretty close though. Oh, well, it was very close in Michigan. Yeah, I, I, I remember winning these two. When I had Optimal RNG on, I had won these two. These other states, though, I don't think you can win. I don't think it's possible. But yeah, that's it anyway. I, ho I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you can, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.